YouTube family and welcome back. Today is going to be an audio slash podcast, okay? It's the 1st of May and we are going to get into survivor's stories, okay? I just want to say thank you to everybody who has purchased my book. Thank you to everyone who has booked sessions with me and thank you for everyone who DMs me just to show appreciation because I appreciate every one of you. I appreciate you guys sharing my videos. Anyway, enough rambling. I got a message, these stories are going to be anonymous, and I'm going to read what they sent to me word for word. I do not know where to start or where to end, but basically my ex-narc started as my boss. He saw me on the first day and immediately started flirting heavily with me. Eventually, as a form of love bombing, he started giving me all sorts of workplace concessions, e.g. the office I wanted, the opportunity to speak first in meetings, he chose my ideas over other co-workers for almost an entire year. He allowed me to pitch all my ideas for the workplace functions, even change the elevator music I told him I liked. These are just a couple of examples. I could list these all day, but he did everything but give me a pay rise. After watching your channel, this is typical narc behaviour. He wanted me hypnotised by these little tiny trinkets, but also did not want me to be able to leave him. I was unable to afford leaving that job. Eventually, it escalated into being invited around to his very expensive flat and being served very expensive wine and chef prepared meals. He even spoke to me about marriage and I believed him. After two years of the relationship, I showed up at his flat an hour earlier than I said I would and his wife answered the door. The scary part of it is, he did not apologise for the incident and made it seem like it was my fault. Then he started contacting me again and love bombing me in different ways. I believe he has paid other employees at my new job to keep an eye on me for him. Wow, I'm guessing this person is a woman. First of all, I just want to say to you that anybody that was in your position would have gone through the same thing. Anyone in your position would have been fooled by this person. This person has used their power to get you in an emotional state. This person has made you feel special. This person made you feel seen. This person made you feel like you could possibly be his wife. And I don't want you to beat yourself up about this because I feel like if I was in this position, I definitely would have got fooled by this person as well. So I'm just going to basically start off with um, the first day that he saw you and he immediately started flirting heavily with you. Now, um, I don't really speak... I don't speak about it much on this channel, but I I had a I had a boss that was a narcissist or a toxic person anyway. And um the first day um he started flirting with me. Not even the first day, the interview, he was flirting with me all throughout the interview to a point the interview wasn't even an interview, it was like a chat. And then he offered me the job before the interview finished. And for me, I feel like that was very unprofessional. Anyway, let's not go back to me, but that's an example of a boss, a toxic, a, a um, narcissistic boss who they kind of, they start flirting, they make you feel like you're, like they make you feel like you're friends, if that makes sense. So the first thing I want to say is the love bombing straight away. But obviously we're not, we don't know about all of that kind of stuff. But now that we know, about narcissists and love bombing we can tell and we can see that he would love bomb you on the, he love bombed you on the first day okay um but then when you're saying that he gave you all types of workplace concessions the office you wanted the opportunity to sp speak first in meetings um he chose your ideas of other co-workers that in itself is a bit is a bit fishy the the office choosing the office that you want that, I don't see that as, you know, being narcissistic, okay? 
But the fact that he's giving you the opportunity to speak first in meetings could show some sort of favoritism. The fact he's choosing your ideas, he's choosing your ideas, so allowing you to even change the music. So he's cho he's showing you how much power he actually gave you a taste of power within the business and he basically showed you that look if you stick with me babe like you could be running things do you understand so psychologically um he got to your emotions and it might seem like little things but it's a big thing and like you said you said he did everything but give you a pay rise so what that shows me is that he has used his power to get into your mind, to get into your head, to get you emotional. Because if he really cared about you, and if if he if he really felt like you were a top employee, regardless of whether he liked you or not, whether he wanted to be with you or not, if he felt like you were bringing something really good to the business, he should have gave you a pay rise. I'm not taking away that you didn't do your job, you didn't do a great job, I'm just saying, if someone's really helping out your business, you would put the money and say, you know what, I appreciate you. Here's a bonus. Here's a pay rise. And like you said, after watching my channel, it's a typical not behaviour. You said that he wanted you hypnotised by these tiny trinkets. But this is, doesn't matter whether it's in the workplace, whether it's your boss, whether it's your partner. They're going to do these things. So for example, the narcissist that was in my life, he would open the door for me. Every time we got in the car, he would open the door for me and those things stopped. And I remember I pulled him up once and said, hold on, you're not opening the door for me. So understand, it might seem like little things, but they play a big part. Normal people when you're dating, normal people that date you are rarely going to open the door for you. And if they do open the door for you, that's just something that they do. That's just something that they probably do for their mom, their grandma, something normal that they will do. However, they do these things to get into your mind, to get you emotional and to get you hooked on that feeling. He didn't want you to leave. So obviously he made it so, he made the job so important that maybe you might get a promotion. Maybe that, or if you were to leave, you would never have the same experience that you're having with this person. So this is what he did to get you in his proximity. So you said you was invited to his house where... He had a very expensive flat and he had expensive wine and chef prepared meals. So again, this is playing with your emotions. This is basically saying, stick with me, baby. And you can go to the top. Stick with me at work and look what can happen to you. Have a relationship with me. You don't have to cook. You don't have to, you live the good life. You live the soft life. Like, nobody wants to struggle in life. No one wants to cook, wants to clean. Everyone wants to live in a nice, beautiful flat, beautiful surroundings. And he's showing you, he might not have said in words, I'm going to give this to you, but he's showing you what you could possibly have if you stick with him. Again, love bombing. And you said here, he even spoke to me of marriage and I believed him. So understand that it will get to a point where some women will wisen up and they'll say, okay, he's got lots of money, he's this, he's that, but... If he's not going to put a ring on it, I'm gone. So he had to promise you this, a.k.a. future faking. He had to promise you, look, let's get married. So you're thinking, if I get married to this guy, I don't just love this guy because obviously you've been love bombed and narcissists are very charming. But you are actually seeing you're going to be living this. It's like it's like a dream come true. You're living a soft life with him. You get all the perks at work. You get the chef prepared meals, the expensive flat, and he wants to marry you. Well, of course you're going to fall for that. Anybody would. That's like the dream life. That's like the dream thing that everybody wants. Everybody wants to be with a partner that they get along with, that they find their soulmate. They want their soulmate to thrive. They want their soulmate to be successful, especially financially, so you can live a good life. Nobody wants to struggle. So that in itself, the fact he's got money and power and he wants to marry you, you're already hooked at that point. So you say, after two years of the relationship, I showed up at his flat an hour earlier than I said I would. Now, what is the problem with that? He knew you was coming anyway, so there's no problem with that. However, I'm not sure whether 
you believe in God or not, but I believe that God did that for a reason. God had enough of him doing what he was doing behind your back. God had enough of everything and God had to put a stop to it. Because if God didn't do this, who knows what may have happened or what, what may not have happened. So his wife answers the door. Because maybe it's a thing where his wife was meant to leave, let's just say, two or three hours earlier. And he told you to come at a certain time. So he probably gave himself enough time for his wife to leave and for him to hide the fact he has a wife and for you to turn up. However, the wife decided maybe just to, that she wanted to stay for a bit. Maybe she decided she's not leaving or, you know, just, you know, things happen. Sometimes you say I'm going to leave at 10 o'clock and you don't leave until 12. It's just, it's just life. Okay. You make plans. doesn't always work out. However, there's a reason why you turned up earlier. There was a reason why that woman didn't leave earlier as well. Or his wife, sorry. And like you said, the scary part of it is that he did not apologise for the incident and made it seem like it was my fault. Now, when you said that, that actually hit a chord for me because I felt like... I honestly felt like... I understand where you're coming from with that one. I definitely understand because when the narcissist cheated on me and when the narcissist cheated on me and I caught him, he did exactly the same thing. Did not apologise and made it out like it was my fault. And I feel like with the narcissist, they break us down so much that it could be a thing that if they just apologised and, and they came across sincere and or even if they just owned up to it before they got caught, he most likely would have taken them back. That's how hooked I was. If he said, I cheated on you, I'm so sorry, please take me back. I probably would eventually take him back. Okay. However, like you said, the scary part of it is he did not apologise and made it seem like it was your fault. And that's what really gets to you. It's obviously the cheating, it hurts. The lying, the betrayal, it hurts. But the way they react to it, it hurts even more. Because then the mask slips. We see who they really are. And that's what really, really hurts. You said here, then he started contacting me again and love bombing me in different ways. They're a mess. Narcissists are a mess. They could have done this when they got caught. But they get, they get themselves such in a, such a little fit that they end up showing their true selves when they get caught. They can't help it. And then they have to go back and do the love bombing. And you said here, I think, I believe he has paid other employees at my job to keep an eye on me for him. Now, I don't know if you're still at this workplace or not, but if you are, you need to leave. You need to leave. And when you do leave, you'll, you'll realise that whatever it is that you find again will be much better than that. I know that he's probably made it out like this job is something that's that's really good for you or... You know, you're probably thinking about the past when you had so much um, influence and power in the decision making of the business. However, those days are gone. He love bombed you. That's it. It's time to move on, especially if this guy is still your boss and all of this has happened. It's definitely time to move on. If you don't move on, he can use another employee as a new supply and everything that you went through with the boss you're going to be sitting there you're going to watch it happen to the new girl the new girl's going to be doing everything you did she's going to be getting the office that you wanted or a better office than what you have she's going to be taking control of the meetings all her ideas are going to be taken in and and be used into full effect and you're going to be sitting back thinking I, was i just that replaceable was i just a number so for your mental health, I think it's time you move on if you haven't already. That's my opinion. This is my thoughts on your story. I do offer phone consultations and I also offer international phone consultations. And I also have a book, The Time to Heal is Now. This is a self-help book that I think will help you along the way, especially dealing with what you have dealt with. If you do like this audio, please like comment and subscribe and please share this and I will see you for my next video or my next audio. Bye!